study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com Exodus chapter 13, verse 1. So Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify, sanctify to me all of the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of animal. It is mine. Part of the reason why I'm, I'm crying is because my son... <laughs> That's Yah's mercy. It's his mercy to me. I messed up real bad in this marriage. Even when I knew Torah. And my wife. Yeah, who could have took my wife? <laughs> she had a seizure in front of me, man, while she was giving labor. And I told you who else? <laughs> I told him, I was like, Father, I, I know I haven't been perfect and I've committed some iniquities. And if you were to take my wife, you would be justified. You would be righteous and holy in taking her now from me and making me suffer. But please don't. And there were like 10 doctors, 10 doctors swarmed that room in seconds, man. They came in that room in seconds, man. It was amazing. That hospital did an amazing job, man. They came in, got her, she had a pulse, she was breathing. And I was so broken. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see it not coming a mile away, man. It just hit me and changed my life. It took me to a different level of uh, just appreciation as a husband and a father. And uh, I think I needed that because I had plans to just miss two or three days of work and then go back to work, you know. I was on daddy duty all week. Mom was down. She had a C-section. And uh, so during that worship song, that's one of the things besides Yahoo is saving me when I was 16. But just even like I said, man, even after we're believers, we're something's going to happen to us. And this is what I told Kiana. I was like, Kiana, just... All, all I could do is warn you and let you know something's going to happen. There's going to be some kind of tragedy, some major test that you're going to have to experience that's going to test your faith. And all I, could, all I can encourage you is to get as strong as you can now. Reading, praying, fellowshipping, but with keeping in mind that something's going to happen that you did not see coming. And when it comes, it's going to be a test of where you put your faith. And believe me, I failed. I failed several times. But I won because Yahuwah's mercy, he didn't kill me in my sin. He let me live so that I can repent and be where I am today. So I'm a winner. As I speak, I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. But I have failed some tests. Mailed, failed miserably sometimes. But uh, so that worship song, I'm sorry, that's kind of some stuff that's on my mind. Now I'm reading this firstborn right here, the first verse. My goodness gracious. Okay. Firstborn are Yahuwah's. He says, it is mine. My son is Yahuwah's. Verse 3, Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you came out of Egypt. And we're in Exodus chapter 13, uh, for those who just came in. Shalom, by the way. Verse 3 of Exodus 13. 
Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't even know if I'll be able to read this today, y'all. Oh, DRL, go ahead. Tag. I'm tagging you in, man. I'm tagging you in. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I'll read. Uh, I'll start in verse three. I'm going to be reading for the Septuagint. Is that all right? Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. And Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you came forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For with a strong hand, Yahuwah brought you forth thence, and leaven shall not be eaten. For on this day you go forth in the month, the month of new corn, yeah. and it shall come to pass. Sorry, it shall come to pass when Yahuwah thy God shall have brought thee into the land of the Canaanites, and the Chittites, and the Amorites, and the Evites, and the Jebusites, and the Gergesites, and the Pharisites, which he swore, swore to thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, and that thou shalt perform this service in, the, in this month. Six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day is a feast to Yahuwah. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Nothing leavened shall be seen with thee, neither shalt thou have leaven in thy, all thy borders. And thou shalt tell thy son. So, in that so day. real quick thing, I want to go back since you're reading the Septuagint and just okay. identify a difference, but you bring form. some clarity. Your verse six says, six mm -hmm. days you shall eat unleavened bread, which is which is the same as a verse that we cross-referenced last week. I forgot where my wife went. Uh numbers, I think, or something like that. Uh, but it said it the same way as the Septuagint. But the Masoretic says. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahuwah. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it's both one and the same. Um, but just for clarity, because somebody could hear that one and say, oh, we only got to eat unleavened bread for six days. But uh, there's multiple scriptures to show that we are eating all unleavened bread all seven days. Uh, but just a little, little little something I saw. Uh, Ezzy, I see your hand is up. Yeah, um, because I noticed that difference too. And I have always wondered if we are to only eat unleavened bread and then have a feast on the seventh day. Uh, no, because the, the first day we eat the lamb. Right. That's Exodus 12, the previous chapter. So the lamb was eaten, but going forward, I guess would be your question. I, I guess right after be, after the Passover lamb, those next Passovers or yeah, eleven bread, those next days. Yeah, we it's a low carb week. <laughs> All right, we can we can we can we can we can entertain that real quick. So this might clarify on Leviticus twenty three. Um, Starting at verse five, it says, In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight, there shall be a Passover offering to Yahuwah. And on the fifteenth day of that same month, uh the of Yahuwah's feast of unleavened bread, you shall eat unleavened bread for seven days. On the first day you shall celebrate a sacred occasion. You shall not work at your occupations. Seven days you shall make an offering, make offerings by fire to Yahuwah. The seventh day shall be a sacred occasion. You shall not work at your occupations that clarifies but it is a, it's a whole week of unleavened bread but the first and last one are convocations they are celebrations and i th i think it's consistent the passover is always eaten on the first day i think that's consistent throughout all scripture even into the new testament where the disciples were going where yahusha said to prepare the passover lamb and so I think it's expect it was always expected for the Passover and unleavened bread that on the first day you eat meat. So interesting thought, Ezzy, but I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I I don't think it's only bread. Okay, she, thanks. She's wondering if you only eat unleavened bread and no meat, you eat meat on the last day as a feast. Yeah. But 
But the answer would be, I don't, the answer would be no. Yeah, wife is saying you can eat bitter herbs in it. Without going to Exodus 12, go to other passages other than Exodus 12. But uh, other than that, d you have something you wanted to say? No. Nope. All right. Can you read uh, verse 7 again? Yep. Exodus Thanks, 13, sir. verse 7. Yep. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Nothing leaven shall be seen with thee, neither shall you have leaven in all thy borders. And thou shalt tell thy son in that day, saying, Therefore, Yahuwah dealt thus with me as I was going out of Egypt. And it shall be to thee a sign upon thy hand and a memorial before thine eyes, that the law of Yahuwah may be in thy mouth, for with a strong hand, Yahuwah God brought thee out of Egypt and preserved you this law according to the times of the seasons from year to year. And it shall come to pass when Yahuwah thy God shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites as he swore to thy fathers and shall give it to thee. That you shall set apart every offspring opening the womb, the males to Yahuwah, everyone that opens the womb out of the herds or among the cattle. As many as you shall have, you shall sanctify the males to Yahuwah. Verse 13, every offspring opening the womb of the, of the ass, you shall change for a sheep. And, it, and, you, and if you will ch not change it, you shall redeem it. Every firstborn of man of thy son shall you redeem. And if thy son should ask you hereafter, saying, what is this? Then you shall say to him with a strong hand, Yahuwah brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He's like saying, make it known with a strong hand. Like, what is this? What are we doing? Yeah, one more verse. Go to 15. And when Pharaoh hardened his heart so as not to send us away, he slew every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore do... I sacrifice every offspring that opens the womb, the males to Yahuwah, and every firstborn of my sons I will redeem. Mm 